Hello and welcome to Tutorial to You. My name is Yannick and in this video I show you how you can create generic classes in Kotlin and explain to you in which scenario you should use them. If you are new to our channel or haven't subscribed already, go ahead and subscribe to our channel right now because you don't want to miss any of our high quality Android, Kotlin and Java videos. Here I have a simple Kotlin project set up and I personally think that it's very easy to learn new things and understand new things. Once you sit in front of a problem and don't know what to do or think ah, maybe there's a better way to solve this. So let's go ahead. Here we have a class car and it takes a simple parameter of data type integer right here. And it simply prints out the year when we create an instance of that class. Now here in the main function, once we start the application, we can see that it logs 2010 into the console because that's how we create the instance of that object. Now please notice that we call that variable here hint because the data type that we are submitting here is an integer because here we have defined it as an integer too, right? So, so now what happens if that year would be a string? Let's go ahead and try that out. I simply copy that line of code here and call it h string. And now I want to create that, but I want to pass it in as a string because numbers could also be written as a string, right? And we could convert them and all of this stuff. Yeah, that's true. But we could also use a completely different approach and go ahead and make that class a generic class. Now, when we hold the cursor above that red line here, we can see a type mismatch because it's requiring an integer and we are submitting a string value. To solve the type mismatch problem, we need to use a generic type class, which is a user defined class that accepts the different types of parameters inside of a single class. So let's rewrite that class code here and turn it into a generic type. Creating generic classes, parameters and functions is really not a lot of work. It's more about that you know when to create them and how, right? So now let's take that class here and let's add a type to it. So car of type T, where T can be anything, right? T could potentially be an integer, a string or any other data type. Now, this is what you have to create. Also, inside of the parameter now, our year is still of data type int. We go ahead and set that to whatever type we are receiving here in the cast. So let's set it to year of data type T2. So if we submit the string here, T will be a string and year will be a string. If we submit an integer so that we create a car with type integer, then year would also be that type, which is integer. Now let's go ahead. Here in the next line, you can see var year of type integer and that doesn't make sense anymore because if we're now submitting a string we will see that mismatch again here type mismatch required int but we found t so let's go ahead and set that to whatever data type we're sending in right and that's exactly the definition for a generic it's generic it can be anything it can be any type it can be any t now that's all we have to do to turn that class into a generic class Oh, and if you want to learn more about that, we also have that in a written format, which is very, very detailed. So simply go ahead and check out tutorialcu slash blog. You can find the link to the entire blog and to that specific article in the description below. Now let's take line two and three right here and let's rewrite them so that they are working with our generic car class. The only thing that we now have to adjust is to provide a type. So here with h int, we go ahead and create a car and we submit a data type, which is int. Now here, car of data type int is matching the parameter we are submitting here when we create the instance. So now we can do the same thing in the next line of code, h string of data type string. And here inside of that instantiation, I'm gonna provide a string too, so that's working. If we remove that, it will not work because we have a type mismatch again, because here we have an integer and here we have a string. So type mismatch is happening again. But that's exactly how it should work because we have a so-called type safety. And that's a huge benefit of generic classes because generics do not allow the storage of other objects. Also, we don't have to do any type casting because we are defining the type directly right here. And another very great thing is that generic code is checked at compile time so that it can avoid any problems at runtime. And that's for sure a huge benefit, right? Now let's run our application and let's see what we got here. In the console, you can see 2010 and 2012. And that's the proof that our generic class is working. 
Now there are more topics on generic, like extension functions for example, properties and methods, but they all apply the same approach. If you want to see more on that topic, definitely leave a comment below and tell us what generics topic you want to see next. And that's it with this video. I hope you like it. If you haven't subscribed already, make sure to subscribe to our channel right now because we are providing high quality content and you don't want to miss any of it. Thanks for watching, have a great day and see you next time.